So this is our final video for functional groups for organic substances. Here's what we've gone over. And remember, the call letters are very important for you to remember. We started out with halocarbons and fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine are on top of a hydrocarbon chain. So F, C, L, B, R, and I. Alcohols, the hydroxy group. O, H. And don't forget, halocarbons and alcohols, those functional groups can be anywhere. The OH could be anywhere on the carbon chain, and the halogens can be anywhere in the carbon chain. But for organic acids, remember, it's CO, and it always has to go at the end. C, O, O, H. That always has to go at the end. And aldehydes, that's CHO, C, H, O, that always has to go at the end. Ketones is a little different. That's a double bonded O off a of middle carbon. So the call letters are C, O, C. Esters, that's the hardest one, and we did that in the last video. The call letters for an ester, remember, an <clears throat> organic acid plus an alcohol yields ester plus water. And the call letters for an ester is kook. C O O C. Now, we have three functional groups left. We have ethers, amines, and amides, or amides, whichever way you want to say it. So we're going to start out with ethers right now and finish off those three. So we're going to start out by learning how to name an ether. It's not anything like the rest of the functional groups. Okay, nothing like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the first one. I'm going to give you the molecular formula for the first one. You try to figure out what the structural formula would be. CH3OCH3. So the call letters for an ether are HOC. So call letters. And that's Hawk. Now, let's see if we can build this. CH3OCH3. So the structural formula, C H3. And then it's very strange, watch, the O comes next. O C. H3. That is the structural formula. The O is right in the middle of the carbon chain, right between the carbons. Where ketones, the double bonded O was off a top carbon in the middle somewhere. This, the O is right in the middle. So this is the first ether. And to name it, like I said at the beginning, it's really weird. So you name the left of the O, and you name the right of the O. The left of the O, then the right of the O. So this, CH3 is a methyl, and that's a methyl. But you don't say methyl, methyl, ether. If you have two methyls, it's this. The name of that is dimethyl ether. So you name to the left and you name to the right. Dimethyl ether. Okay? All right, we're going to do two more and then I'm going to give you a background about ethers. All right, so that was the first one. Let's put down the next one. So watch. Here is, I'm going to give you the name this time and you see if you can tell me how to build it. So this one is methyl ethyl ether. 
So remember how you name it, to the left of the O and then to the right of the O. So to the left of the O, we have a methyl. So a methyl is a CH3. And then to the right of the O, but we got to put the O in there now. So to the right of the O, so we have a methyl there, CH3. Now we have an ethyl, which means two carbons. And there is the structural formula for methyl ethyl ether. Now let's look at the molecular formula. CH3O, then C2H5. CH3O, C2H5. So that is methyl ethyl ether. Now, the most important ether of all is the next one. So I gave you the name, you built it. This time, I'm going to give you the structure. You're going to give me the name. There it is. So there's two carbons on the left. That's an ethyl. There's two carbons on the right. That's an ethyl. So the name of this one, which is for us the most important ether, is this. Diethyl ether. Molecular formula. This then O, then that. So that's C2H5, O, C2H5. Now, there's a story behind this one. So the story is diethyl ether was first found in like 1540, but nobody knew what to do with it. And then around 1842, uh, people started experimenting with it. And I think it was, I think it was in France or England, I'm not quite sure which. When they would experiment with a new substance, they'd bring like a person in from the street or a prisoner and they'd sit them down. And in this case, there was a bunch of scientists and they brought in this person. And like I said, I don't know if it was just a street person or a prisoner. And they had ether, which was a liquid, and it had a super high vapor pressure. Because if you look, it's really symmetrical. And that means nonpolar, which means it's held together by Van der Waals forces. So they had this liquid there, and they uncorked the bottle with the ether in it, and they made this guy smell it, and he smelled it, and his eyes rolled in the back of his head, and he fell off the chair. And everybody was waiting like, whoa, what happened to him? And he woke up and he said something like, whoa. And so each one of the people around the table tried it and it was the same thing. They kind of passed out a little bit, woke back up, and they said, wow. Well, ether became extremely addictive, like crack cocaine or heroin or anything. Ether was very, very addictive. Uh, but they did find it that it made people pass out. So they said, hmm, maybe we should use it kind of like an anesthetic. Well, let me tell you what was going on about after 1842, we had the Civil War. And during the Civil War, uh, those musket balls were like 50 caliber musket balls. And when they'd hit, they would shatter everything. And in those days, they didn't have very much ether available. And so what they do is if your arm or leg was shattered by a musket ball they would call in a surgeon and you would want a surgeon not that was really good with his hands you, the surgeons back then were you know they said that the the best surgeon was the one that could cut off your arm or leg the fastest and since they didn't have very much ether they either got the person drunk or they didn't use anything. And that's where the term, you gotta bite the bullet came in. Because the bullets were made of lead. 
and they'd put uh, one of those lead brown bullets in the guy's mouth and he'd say bite down on it and then when they start sawing off his arm or leg he'd bite down and that's where that term came from you got to bite the bullet means you got it you just got to go for it how tough it is doesn't make any difference you just have to try it uh, but what they started to do is they started to use ether and they said hey this is great uh, because it passes the person out well uh, one of the people that had to use ether this person I think they had like an ingrown toenail or either a cow or a horse stepped on their foot and they put the, it was a woman and they put this woman under with ether and they removed her toenail and she died and they said what what the heck happened well when they did an autopsy on the woman they found out that she aspirated her own vomit which means she was passed out but the ether made her sick to her stomach and when she threw up she was breathing in and the vomit went into her trachea and down into her lungs and suffocated her that's why to this day when you take anesthesia they always tell you don't eat 12 hours before your surgery because the anesthesia even though it's not ether anymore the anesthesia still makes some people sick to their stomach so they stopped doing this they were giving this ether to pregnant women for uh, having babies and it didn't work very well so they don't use that anymore but that's the story on ether now what I want you to do is you're going to build two ethers just like you did for the rest of the functional groups so So remember, you have to do the structure and the molecular formula. I'll give you the name, okay? So this is the first one I want. Ethyl. Propyl ether. That's the first one, ethyl propyl ether. And the second one, dibutyl ether. So, ethyl propyl ether, build it, and I want the molecular formula. Dibutyl ether, build it, I want the molecular formula. Okay, so that is all you have to know for ether. The naming is a little weird. All right, on to Roman numeral eight. Amines, okay. Amines. Now, I'm going to give you the molecular formula and see if you can figure out how to build it. So here's one of them. Okay, so here is the molecular formula. Watch how you build this thing. First, you got to find out how many carbons there are in a row or in the trunk. So we have one carbon there, three there, that's four, five. So we have five carbons. All right, off the first carbon, we have three hydrogens. One, two, three. Off the next three carbons, there's two each. One, two, one, two, one, two. Now, off the last carbon, we have 
two hydrogens, and then we've got this weird NH2. So watch, N. That's what this thing looks like. Okay, now, we know carbon needs four bonds. We know hydrogen needs one. We know the halides, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, need one. We know oxygen needs two. And now, you know nitrogen needs three. One, two, three. Okay? So, that's what it looks like. And now, to name it, it's pretty easy to name. So, let's put down number two. Now, watch how we name this thing. One, two, three, four, five. So remember, most of them is like pentane, so that's a pentane trunk, and this is called an amine, so you drop the E and add amine. So the, this one right here, P-E-N-T-A-N, so this is pentanamine. Now, See where that N is? It's off the last carbon. All right, that NH2 can be anywhere. So now you got to tell the person that wants to draw it where the NH2 comes off. So actually this, that's the trunk, pentanamine, and that would be off this end, so that would be one pentanamine. One pentanamine. So we're going to write that down for number two. Drop the E, add A M I N E. Drop, add M E. So drop the E and add M E. Okay? So let me give you a name and see if we can build it. So let's put this one down for number three. Let's do two. So two hexanamine. So we know that hex is six carbons. So we build the six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now Amine means NH2, and 2, so it comes off the second carbon, so watch. Off the second carbon, we put an NH2. Now you can write an NH2 like that, or you can put the two H's off the end, whichever way you want. But now all the rest are hydrogens. All right, so now you just have to put the molecular formula. And this is a little bit difficult with this thing sticking out here. All right, so watch. The molecular formula for this crazy thing. CH3 That's CH3 CHNH2 All right, CH3, CH, NH2, and then you can put all these together. One, two, three, four. C4, and then count the hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. H9. So, that is two hexanamines. CH3, CH, NH2, C4, H9. Okay? Now, the next one we're going to do before I assign you some is I'll give you the structure, you got to name it, and then give me the molecular formula. So this is number four.
So that is the structure. Now, first thing you got to do is count the number of carbons for your trunk. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight carbons in the trunk. And since that is an NH2, that's an amine. So instead of octane, drop the E and add amine. So this is octanamine. But you got to tell the person that's drawing it where the NH2 or the amine functional group comes off. Well, one, two, three. So this would be three octanamine. All right, now we have to do the molecular formula. So we can put these two together. So that's C2H5, C2H5, and then we have CHNH2, CHNH2, and then you can put all those together. One, two, three, four, five, so that would be C5, H, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there it is. Okay, so the NH2 can go anywhere, but you have to number what carbon the NH2 comes off of. All right? Those are amines. So I'm going to give you two to do. All right? And the first one, I'll give you the name. And then the second one, I'll give you the structure. So number five, number five is four octanamine. We almost did something just like that. So what you have to do is you have to structure a molecular formula. All right, that's the first one. And now number six. Number six, I'm going to give you the molecular formula. You give me the name and the structure. So CH3, C3, H7, CH, NH2, C4, H9, and here's what I want. Structure and name. Okay, so now so far in this video you have four to do. You have two ethers to build and name and molecular formula, and you have two amines. Now, there is something else I want you to do, all right? And we'll see if you can figure out. I want you to do this. Now watch, I'm going to draw something on the board, and you're going to find the two functional groups, and then you're going to try to figure out what the name of that thing is. So watch. This is number six, or number seven. So here's number seven. All right, there is the structure. Here's what I want you to do. Letter A. The 
first thing I want you to do is you look up there and there are two functional groups. I want you to name those two functional groups. And then letter B, from those two functional groups, I want to know what that thing is. Because you all know it from biology. What is the common name for that? And if you put the two functional group names together, you can probably figure it out. So now you have five questions to do. Two ethers, and now you have two amines and to figure out this one. And we've got one more functional group, and that is it. OK? So the last functional group. is number nine, and it's called the amides. So for amides, this is how you name them. You drop the E and add amide. Now, you don't need a number for the name. So if you don't need a number for the name, that must mean this functional group comes off the end. Because all the other functional groups, you have to put a number in there. That means they can go anywhere in the hydrocarbon chain. But the ones that don't need a number, like organic acids don't need a number, OK? Because SKU always comes off the end. Aldehydes don't need a number because the CHO always comes off the end. Same thing here. The amides don't need a number because the functional group comes off the end. OK? All right. So I'm going to give you a molecular formula. We're going to try to build it and name it. So here we go. All right, it looks a little crazy. C2H5, CH2, taken three times, and then CONH2. All right, so we have to count the number of carbons to find the trunk. Two, three, four, five, six. So we have a six carbon trunk. Six carbon trunk. Now just do what it says. Off the first two carbons come five hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five. And then off the next three carbons come two hydrogens each. One, two, one, two, one, two. And then off the N carbon comes an O, and you know we have to have two bonds for an O. Double bonded O, and then an NH2. So that's what this thing looks like. All right, remember, the functional group is always off the end. And for amides, it looks like this. C, double bonded O, NH2, and then however many carbon chains. I can put an R there if you want. Remember, R means you can have any number carbon chain. So this one you can spot very easily, double bonded O, NH2 off the very last one. And now to name it, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six carbons. So instead of saying hexane, you drop the E and add amide. So this is hexanamide. Hexanamide. Okay? All right, we'll do one more, and then I'm going to give you 
two to do for homework. So put down number three. This time I'm going to give you the structure and you're going to try to give me the molecular formula and the name. <clears throat> So, look at that. That's a pretty small one. So, how many carbons does it have in a row? Two. So, your trunk is ethane trunk. But since it's a double bonded L NH2, you know it's an amide or amide. So, the name for this would be ethanamide. Remember, you don't need a number because the Functional group always comes off the end. Now let's do the molecular formula. Molecular formula, CH3, CONH2. That's it. These are pretty easy. All right. So for number four and five, these are your two that you have to do. Number four. Octanamide. And the two things you have to do for me? You have to build the structure and you have to give me a molecular formula. All right, that's the first one. And then the second one is number five. All you have to do, I'm going to give you the molecular formula. You build it and name it. <clears throat> so, C4H9, CONH2, and what I want you to do. You're going to build the structure, and then you're going to name it. There you go. So for this video of the last three functional groups, you have to do two for ether, two for amines, and remember, you have to figure out what that third one is for the amine group. Right? You got to do the two functional groups that you see in there and then try to name the whole thing. And then you do these two. So you have a total of two, three, two. But you have seven questions to do for this one. And then we are finished with functional groups. Okay? All right. Good luck.